had the opportunity this year to be an invited Harley Davidson Born Free builder and to get a Road Glide Special in the 22 model year and basically have at it and put our concept and our touches on it. What's up guys, Steve Garcia, service manager here at Lady Lost Harley Davidson. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about our Born Free 13 build that we got. Something cool and exciting, something different. As you already know here at Lady Lost, we try to uh, go overboard on everything we do here. So when we got the call from uh, Harley Davidson, Matt presented this idea to us, uh, pitched him a couple of my ideas along with Eric Powell's and uh, we came up with this one of a kind motorcycle. Uh, we're calling it the Overglide. So I'm Eric, service technician here at Lady Laws, pretty much the lead technician on this project for a born free build. We decided to go with kind of a overlander, overglide type build. So the concept we decided to go with this year is an overlander theme. We wanted to build something that pays tribute and celebrates Harley Davidson's entry into the adventure touring world last year with the Pan America. Of course, we couldn't just take a Pan America and modify it. We had to do something that was outside of the box and different and something that would challenge us and our service guys here at the dealership. Drawing something on paper is obviously easier than bringing it to life. One key issue was the bags, the mounting brackets for the uh, Pan America bags. We try to use as many Harley Davidson products as possible just to make it look like it's something that's coming out of the factory. So we really wanted to use the Pan America bags, but we needed mounting hardware. Obviously you can't bolt on Pan America mounting brackets onto a road glide. So like I said, a lot of fab work. Uh, we're fortunate to have a good friend of ours that does a lot of fabrication on cars. I picked his brain on a couple things, show him a couple ideas that we have. and. Uh, he brought it to life, so we wanted to do stainless steel finish, keep it that raw look to match the custom exhaust that we had made, along with the custom uh, skid plate that we had made, all made by Jose over at Gorilla Garage. Starting at the front, we went with the two over Krauss inverted front end. One, to gain more ground clearance. Two, the inverted front ends tend to be a little bit stiffer, a little better handling ride. Moving back, you know, we went with uh, different mid controls, foot controls, moved them back to get you more underneath you. We did the PM mid controls on that. We tried to go with a lot of the Pan America parts that were recently launched with the Pan America motorcycle and so things like the luggage here, we've got the side aluminum cases and the top aluminum case on here and that definitely required some ingenuity and get that stuff all mounted on there. We needed to have a custom fabrication mounting system to get these side panniers on the bike. And then we went with that raw metal theme in things like the exhaust system. Gorilla Garage really assisted us in a big way in creating a 100% custom exhaust system on here, a stainless steel system that again gives it that, that rugged aesthetic. We weren't just going for the functional ability of being able to be a little bit more off-road capable, but we were really looking for that overlander look and theme. And you know, we also have the custom skid plate that was fabricated on there as well. Again, to give it that adventure touring overlander look. the Arland S method risers. I think they're a 10 or a 12 inch rise and pullback. They've got their gauge mounted up on top. 
put them right there in your in your line of sight when you're running. I think those worked out well. We did uh, power mad hand guards with the tur integrated turn signals and running lights. Other lights we did the uh, electric lighting company, seven inch round dual LED headlights. Those were a uh, really nice piece, real easy install. You didn't have to source a bracket and a wire harness from a bunch of different companies. Everything came together and I think they really fit the look of the bike we did. You can definitely see when you're out there. Rear fender is stock, we cut that off. Cut it pretty short, I think it came out good. Really exposes that knobby tire in the back, so you get that aggressive look from behind. We did the ST front fender. The fairing is stock, tank is stock. Bike like this, pretty stressful at times. You know, you you see the calendar and you think, oh, I got uh, four six months, or we have enough time. But all that catches up to you with all these mods, trying to get a front end, trying to get a tire that would fit on these wheels. Uh, not easy to try to put, you know, a three and a half four inch wide dirt bike tire on a Harley. Uh, so that took me time, but we all accomplished it, and it's it's well worth it in the end. We wanted spoke wheels, obviously. Pan America gives you the mag wheel feature and the spoke wheel feature. Obviously we wanted to put spoke wheels, give it more of that dirt bike look, but it came into an issue with CVO wheels being back ordered. So we do have, we had issues trying to find that wheel, but we always have a solution. We always try to have a, a plan A, B, C, D, E, and F. So luckily plan B came into effect, which is powder coating the stock project, uh, Prodigy wheels. We want to do something that was similar to the Pan America bags with that silver stainless steel look. Uh, we're fortunate to have a great powder coater. We have Andrew's powder coating. Pitched him a couple ideas, gave us the samples, and we nailed it. Even though I didn't want this style, I think with the powder coat using the mag wheel, it just gives it a whole nother look. So, big piece of the bike that I'm super excited about is that front wheel. Along with the Krauss front end, uh, we wanted something that was going to be able to take that the dirt roads, hard pounding, uh, we wanted a good suspension. So we went with Krause's Olin's inverted front end. A lot of guys do Brembo, uh, radio calipers, which is cool, not knocking it, but we try to keep it as hardly as possible. So we kept the stock brake calipers and I think it just pops. It has a little touch of silver, a little stainless steel raw look that just tied into the bike perfectly. It all came together. We were able to take it out and ride it yesterday. And I, I was actually really surprised to get out on the freeway and. 75 80 miles an hour it's it's smooth no wobble or anything up on highway speeds it ran good as far as the paint and, and the the look and the theme of the bike we used the deadwood green which is a factory paint that was available in the pan america that we wanted that off-road look that the deadwood green i feel like complements that off-road look a lot and then the seat we wanted a gripper seat so you're off-road it's exposed to the elements you want something that's going to last and be you know rugged and heavy duty in the rear we used harley davidson's screaming eagle shocks with the remote reservoirs on there Again, raise it up a little bit and give you a premium ride comfort. And then we have the proper guards on there. Obviously, you have the, the metal bags here in case in the event of a tip over. We've also got the engine guard on here as well. So to protect the bike as, as best as we could uh, in a tip over situation. Here at Lay Laws, we do a lot of trips. We do get, you know, we, we get crazy and want to camp out sometimes. And, you know, we all can't just go on a dirt road on a Lowrider S or a Road King. So Steve and Eric did a great job at putting this thing together. Uh, as we all collaborated on the concept of the bike, we really wanted to have some major features of the bike look the part uh, and, and be off-road capable, and also have a bike that was very functional, very safe, and something that was very rideable, that someone could take long trips. A lot of us here like to do the, 
the long uh, cross-country touring style stuff and do national parks. And so a lot of times when you're going to these national parks and things and there's camping spots off to the side of the road, a lot of times the stock Harley Davidson won't do it. And so we wanted a bike that you could take off-road five, six miles to a campsite or whatever it may be, and the bike would be a, a more off-road capable than your standard road glide. We wanted the customer to be able to just get crazy and say, you know, screw the road, I'm gonna jump into the dirt, or, you know, I wouldn't say take it in the sand, but you know, there's other guys crazier than me. I would say Andrew would be somebody that would be like, I'm gonna try that in the sand, and give it full throttle, and hey, it might work, it might not, you know? It's uh, definitely in its own category. You know, we've been going to Born Free off and on over the 13 years it's been running. Uh, you know, the performance bagger scene's been real big the last couple of years. This is in its own category. It's something different. And that's what we like to do. We like to, you know, kind of push the envelope a little bit and do things that aren't the same as everybody else. We wanted to do something that was unique. We wanted to take a bike that Harley Davidson in no way intended to be off-road capable. And you know, the Road Glide being an iconic model in Harley Davidson's lineup, we wanted to take those two factors and create a Road Glide in a completely different theme that typically isn't seen at the Born Free show. We just want to bring the best and I think we accomplished that. Join us this year at the Born Free Show on June 25th and 26th and see the Overglide in person on display at the Harley Davidson booth. Let us know what you guys think of the bike. Thanks a lot for watching guys. We'll see you on the next one. Later.